Hello and welcome to today's lesson. So in today's lesson, we are going to discuss a question. And in this question, we are going to make use of um, how to find the fixed point of a system of ODEs, how to classify them, and how to know whether it bifurcates or not. So recall that we've learned bifurcation in one dimension for scalar differential equations and today we are going to have a discussion when we have a system of ordinary differential equations. So the question reads, given that um, the dx is given by this particular equation here, and the y dt is also given by this, where our alpha and beta are all greater than zero, and they are parameters, and our x, y is, they are also greater than zero, are dimensionless variables. So the first thing we are going to do is to find all the fixed points of the system of ODs and classify them. And the second part of this is for us to look at whether the system of OD is bifurcate or not. So we are quickly going to go through the solution. <clears throat> so we have these two equations from the question. So the first part of the question says you have to find all the fixed points of the system and classify them. So recall that in finding fixed points of it is clear differential equation or a system of ordinary differential equations, we put the derivatives to zero. So that means that in this case, we are going to put dx dt to zero and solve the resulting equation simultaneously. <coughs> so this is the equation we obtain when we put the derivative to zero. So now we have two system of equations and we have to solve for alpha and beta so from equation 2 this equation we can make beta the subject so making the beta the subject making beta the subject in equation 2 gives us beta equals s squared y and um we want to find y here and so finding y here so here we solve for x and y, okay? We solve for x and y from the two equations here. So we are going to get y to be equal to beta over s squared when we divide through by s squared, right? And we name this equation 3. Know that we want to find y in terms of alpha and beta. So that means this doesn't give us a complete answer, but don't worry, we will get there. So that means y is equal to beta over s squared. And we name this equation 3. So the next thing is that we are going to put equation 3 here into equation 1, as we can see here. So we put equation 3 into equation 1. And that gives us 0 is equal to alpha minus s plus s squared times y. But in place of y, we put beta over s squared there. So you realize that the s squared here is going to cancel this s squared. So we are going to get... 0 will be equal to alpha minus x plus beta and we are finding x so we can bring x to the left hand side and that will give us x to be equal to alpha plus beta so that means that we've been able to express x in terms of alpha and beta and we name that equation 4 so know that in equation 3 we had beta over s squared right but we have to make sure everything is in terms of alpha and beta so making that substitution we are going to get y will be equal to beta over alpha plus beta all squared. Remember, x is alpha plus beta. So s squared will be alpha plus beta all squared. And this is what we get. So this is what we got for y. And this is what we got for x. Alright, so that means x is alpha plus beta. And y is um, beta over alpha plus beta all squared. So bringing these two together will give us 
the point here right so we have this point and now i want to check whether this point is a fixed point or not so um you can go through other means to get other points but in this case we are only going to get one fixed point all right so this would be a fixed point but we are supposed to find out if it's a fixed point or not so checking if this point is a fixed point so note that if this point is a fixed point then it has to satisfy this condition so when you put it inside um equation one and equation two right the question given to us the derivative should be equal to zero so the s and the t and the y dt should be zero so we call that from the question we had so let me show you right so we had the x dt equals whatever we have here we have the y dt equals whatever we have here so now in place of the x and the y so the x and the y here we are going to put in the values that we found for x and y and here to the same thing and when we do that we are supposed to get zero here and zero here if that condition holds then it means that the point that we had is a fixed point if that doesn't hold then our point is not a fixed point okay so let's try to do that verification here so now we have alpha minus so in place of x we have this here in place of s squared we have this here and in place of y we have this here so you realize that with this alpha plus beta all squared will cancel this right so we are going to be left with alpha and when we expand this we get minus alpha minus beta plus beta and we know of course alpha minus alpha gives us zero minus beta plus beta also gives us zero so we have the sdt equals zero so the first equation holds and so let me the second one so with the second one too we have the y dt is equal to beta minus in place of x squared we have alpha plus beta squared there and in place of y we have this here so we just to this cancel this and we are simply going to have beta minus beta which gives us zero so we could see here that um this satisfies the equation right so that means that since that point we had satisfied the equation it is a fixed point so we have just one fixed point for the system of ordinary differential equations that we had above and our fixed point is alpha plus beta comma beta over alpha plus beta squared right so the next thing is that we are going to classify this fixed point so recall that um a condition which was given was that alpha and beta are all greater than zero in their parameters right so classifying the fixed point you know we have system of ordinary differential equations so in trying to classify the fixed point um we have to linearize it and in fact the system of od given to us was non-linear so we have to linearize it using the jacobi matrix so we let f of x be equal to alpha minus x plus x squared y right and we let g of x be equal to beta minus x squared y so there's a there's it so we let um we let f of x be equal to whatever i see f of x y and g of x y be equal to whatever we have here <clears throat> so that's what we have here and we use the jacobi matrix which is giving us the partial derivative of f with respect to x that's of f with respect to y of j with respect to x and of j with respect to y and there's our fixed point so that means we have to find the partial derivatives of our function f and j so finding f with respect to x is going to give us negative 1 plus 2 xy but this here xy this product here is non-linear so we ignore it and we get negative 1 Find the partial derivative of y f with respect to y gives us s squared, which is nonlinear, so we have zero. The partial derivative with respect to x of j, like of j with respect to x, gives us this, but this here is nonlinear, so zero. This gives us this, this is nonlinear, so zero. So that means that we're able to find our Jacobi matrix here, which is negative one zero zero, right? And this is the fixed point. But you could see that since we don't have any um x or y here 
it makes this relevant, irrelevant, sorry. So our uh, Jacobi matrix is reduced to this that we can see here. And the next thing that we have to do is to find the eigenvalues of our matrix G here. So you can see by looking at this matrix that the eigenvalues are negative one there. But let's try to show why it is so. So know that the eigenvalue is given by computing the eigenvalue is given by <coughs> The determinant of g minus lambda i equals 0 and that is what we can see here so when you find the determinant of these two by two matrix it gives you lambda equals 0 or lambda equals negative 1 right so for a system of ODs you know we um, classify the fixed point based on the eigenvalues so you can see that here we have one of our eigenvalues being zero. And by the Hartman Grobman theorem, when our in your at least one of our eigenvalues is zero, then we can classify that particular fixed point because it becomes non-hyperbolic. And as a result of that, we can classify. So the conclusion here is that since at least one of the eigenvalues is zero, it implies that the Hartman Grobman theorem fails, and hence we can't classify. Alright, so this is a solution to the first part of the question so the second part of the question was like we should answer this question that's it bifurcate so you realize that the fixed point the um, sorry the stability of the system of ordinary differential equation is going to be based on these arguing values that we have here and this here is fixed it doesn't contain parameters for us to vary them for their um, stability to change because recall that um, in dynamical systems, a bifurcation occurs when a small smooth change made to the parameter values. Thus, the bifurcation parameters of a system causes a sudden qualitative or topological change in its behavior. So here, since none of our argument values contain a parameter, it means that we can't even vary it for the... Um, 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 topological change of the system to change. Hence, the system of ODs that we had doesn't bifurcate. Right? So, thank you very much. And in our next video, we'll try to see if we can solve a question on the hop bifurcation of this question that we had here. Thank you.